Now, the thing with cinema cameras is that the workflow is going to be a little bit different. You might be using your hybrid camera and some lenses for your solo filmmaking. But when you jump up to things like cinema cameras, like this Blackmagic Full Frame 6K over here, oftentimes people associate that with working in teams or working with a crew in order to operate the camera and get what you want out of it. But I don't actually think all of that's entirely true. So in today's video, we are going to try solo filmmaking on the Blackmagic 6K, and we're going to go through all the things that I need to do for this shoot, how I'm going to do some editing tricks, and at the same time, how to record a multi-camera interview while using, well, one camera. We'll figure it out. Now the most important thing that's going to be on any shoot as far as getting the equipment that you need is going to be context. Now in this format I am going to be shooting some interview and I'm going to be shooting some b-roll. It's one day out of three of a documentary shoot that I'm doing as like a BTS film of a dance film that I have to shoot in a couple of weeks. But I've wanted to get some of the background in terms of why we're doing this in the first place, which is kind of the way the whole doc is going to end up going. Now in terms of that a lot of the things that are going to be in the shoot are going to be centered around locked off interview shots, but at the same time we need some b-roll to help tell the story at the same time, which means that I need to build a rig that's not only going to be great for using it on sticks, but if I do have to use light handheld, I could do that as well. And that's where we're going to get into the Blackmagic 6K. Now, this guy does take a little bit to rig up. You do have to get a couple of the accessories going in order to get this to work the way that you want it to. Anything from getting the proper audio to having two XLRs and making sure you have the lens and the map box because it doesn't have internal NDs are all things that you need to consider. However, when you're using things like a top handle and the fact that the rolling shutter for the handle I'm doing isn't that bad, I could just use this setup in terms of being able to complete this shoot, which I only have about three hours to do. Now for everything else, I do have to go to the rental house and pick up some other things that I might need from a lighting and a genie perspective, but we'll just go over there instead. Now, once I have all the gear that I have that's already at my house, the next place I'm going to go to is going to be the rental shop. Now, some of you guys might not have any of these around you, but going to a rental shop for things that you might not have the budget for or the availability for is a great way for not only for you to kind of save a little bit of money because you're not paying the full cost of any sort of piece of gear, but at the same time, if you're somebody like myself that doesn't have a lot of storage space, once I'm done with all the C-stands, the lighting fixtures, and the 6 buys and all the other stuff, I just drop it back over here and that's pretty much it. Now, I've been going to Viva Studios for the last little bit. I've been renting stuff from them. They also rent out some of my own gear while I'm not using it. So this is a great place to go to and a great option if you are in the Toronto area. However, I got to go grab a bunch of G&E stuff, put it in the car so I can go and shoot. But at the same time, when I'm done with the shoot and I come back, well, I don't have to worry about putting it back in my house. Okay, so we have everything ready to go for our interview, or at least we're starting to set things up. Now, we've already gone through the camera rig and kind of how I'm gonna set up the interview shots for this, but you actually could go and see how to shoot multicam interviews with one camera over here, because we're gonna use a lot of the techniques in that video. One, I'm actually kind of in the L shape of the room and I'll put some B-roll over so you could see it, but also because there's a big window here and you could see the light changing, I'm actually going to put on a six by six grim with a one and a quarter diffusion. That way, even though there's harsh sunlight coming in, right now the sun is kind of like directly through the window in the corner of the room, I have a way to soften that up. And I'm also gonna put ND filters on the camera rig to make sure that I can control my exposure. Now, the only thing that might be annoying is because this sun is really hot and heavy, um, I'm only using a 300 watt light, which I thought would be enough. I probably needed something that could control daylight a bit more, but we're going to make do with what we have. And if not, we could always just cut out to the parts I don't like with some of the B-roll because this is shoot number one of three shoots where I still have to do a rehearsal later on and then the final day and film the behind the scenes of that at a later day. So I'm not gonna show B-roll of me setting this guy up. It's pretty self-explanatory, but this is the Westcott six by six, and this is gonna go in the way of the window. So that way we could diffuse that light while I'm getting the interviews in. Also, hang on, just gotta watch the plant here. And to make sure that we're also getting our B-roll, that this also works as well. And also I am just gonna shoot on a tighter lens so that way you can't really see this guy in the shot. Okay, so I'm gonna go and set up the Blackmagic 6K Pro. Now I do have to connect the audio into there and I'm gonna have it as an overhead kind of boom setup. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this guy to point in the corner of the room with our six by diffusion. Petra's over here. 
and uh, we're going to shoot the interview. Now, I have to make adjustments to this shot, and I know I have to, so I'm gonna put this on the tripod first, look at the frame, and then make adjustments as I go. Now, whether you're starting out as a solo filmmaker or working in a team, learning the basics can be tough, but that becomes a lot easier with today's sponsor, which is going to be Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is one of the largest educational platforms that you could find with a multitude of classes of not only becoming a better creative, but also learning the basics of filmmaking and video production. Now, these classes aren't just taught by anyone. You actually can find industry professionals and some of your favorite creators actually teaching courses on Skillshare. When I started out in my filmmaking journey, one of the things that I knew that I didn't know was I didn't know the basics of anything. And I did log a ton of hours actually trying to figure out the basics before my very first video shoot. Now, if you're someone that struggles with choice and you don't necessarily know what you're looking for, you could actually go to Learning Paths. This is a great place to start because you can start off with the individual skill you're trying to learn and Skillshare will actually curate the videos and do the rest for you. Now, you could take a variety of different difficulties and different beginner or advanced classes, but you're gonna be able to use that as an educational resources, especially when you wanna learn a particular skill. Now, one thing that I'm not incredibly strong at is going to be my post-production. I'm not a very strong editor. Now, in terms of actually finding the classes that are gonna work for me, my boy Ryan Cow actually made his first editing class that's going to be on Skillshare. Something I suggest that you guys check out, especially if you wanna get better at post-production. But if you guys do wanna get one month free of Skillshare, the first 500 people that use the link in my description down below are gonna be part of that list that get to enjoy 30 days free off of using Skillshare as a platform. It's a great way to invest into your education and also thank you for them sponsoring this video. But let's get back into talking about the solo filmmaking shoot. Okay, so I couldn't do everything on set in terms of breaking things down. So I decided to use my home office and I'm just gonna interject in between some of the shots. Now, the first thing we're gonna start off with is just the six by six diffusion that's going to be inside of the room. Now, this shot actually looks pretty decent, but there was one thing that I'm like a little bit particular on, but in the end of the day, it actually made something really nice. Now, if you go to the top of the screen, you're gonna notice that the highlights out of the window are a little bit blown out. Now, with as small as the window is in frame, you could probably get away with this. It's not a gigantic deal, but I really wanted to use my false color to see if I can recover any of those highlights just to make sure the window doesn't look completely white and blown out. Now, I did turn on my false color on the Blackmagic 6K, which is actually really nice that that's already embedded into the camera. And all I did was make sure that I could actually expose the window and just making sure that it's not in the red false color. Now, the result of this is that it is going to be a lot darker and underexposed than what I expected it to be. And softening up the sunlight using a 6x6 diffusion is enough to make sure that it's not harsh, but it isn't necessarily enough to make sure that I have proper exposure. And that's when I brought in the Nanlite FC 300. Now this is a light I've talked about before, but it actually works really well in a studio environment because I don't have to worry about having any V-mount batteries. And that means the control box is a bit smaller, but there is one thing, which is the 300 might not be able to overcome sunlight. Now that might be something like a 500 or a 720B, but I brought the 300 on a whim and I'm just hoping for the best right now. Now, now that that's on, it's a little bit dark still, so I do have to turn my exposure up. Now, once I've turned up the exposure on my camera by adjusting my ND filter, one thing that I did notice is that there is a lot of dark shadows on one side of Petra's face. Now, that would be cool if I wanna go for a more moodier shot, but if you check out the video that I was talking about with exposing for dark skin tones, that's not necessarily a I want to do all the time. Now I do want to make sure that I have a little bit of level on the shadow side of Petra's face. So basically what I did was instead of adding another light, I actually added in this big white sheet that I found that was inside of the studio. Now, you know, now normally you could use things like ultra bounces or if you have V flats, just use the white side. And what that does, is it actually reflects the light coming off the FC 300 and gives a little bit of return onto the other side of the face. That way things look nice and evenly. And at the same time, I did set my false color just low enough so I get a little bit of that highlight detail out of that window. Now for me, this is actually a pretty Pretty decent look and for working in a solo environment when you don't have a lot of time that's only really one light to set up and one diffusion and one bounce at the same time. Now, because we're talking about solo filmmaking, one of the things that I do depending on the client is I'll actually get multiple angles of the same interview by either re-asking a couple of questions and changing up the different camera angles and my focal length in order to make it look like there's multiple cameras on the day. The first lens I'm gonna be using is the 21T 1.5 Cine Lens by Irix. Now, I really like this lens. It's super sharp and you can use other things like filtration in order to get the look that you want. Now for the first one, I'm just gonna set up my normal wide angle. This is pretty standard and on 21 millimeters, it works just fine. And this is actually where I'm gonna keep something called my master interview. And this is where I'm gonna ask the bulk of the questions that I need to ask for this documentary. Now, one thing that I also do while asking questions and a new habit I'm picking up, but also telling my talent beforehand what I actually want out of those questions. One thing that I found with some of the documentaries I was shooting in terms of the interviews is I would ask the question, I'd get the answer, but I really didn't get enough of what I needed in terms of a soundbite to actually help out with the story. So 
now I'm just gonna be a little bit more transparent, a little bit more diligent in terms of why I'm asking the questions instead of just the question itself. Now with that, we're actually gonna take that same 21 millimeter and we're gonna get a top down interview angle. Now this is something that's a little bit new to me. I just thought that because I have a wide angle lens, it would look kind of cool as a top down. So that's what we actually ended up using. Now. All you have to do is just raise your tripod a little bit higher and you can actually put your subject a little bit in frame to make sure that you still get them exactly where you want to compositionally. But at the same time, I really do like this top down angle. Okay, so lens change. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the 45 millimeter IRIX lens just to get a couple other questions again. Now this is originally going to be in the multicam one camera video, but I'm gonna ask a little bit in more in depth to some of the questions and get some other angles as well, just to make it look like there was more than one camera on set. Now there's gonna be two things you wanna keep in mind. One, if you don't have the time to get multiple lenses and multiple camera angles, just using the one camera angle is fine. You just might have to be a little bit more B-roll intensive, or you just hold on to the interview shots that you do have. And two, yes, it might take away from the original answer and the original emotion to some of the interview questions before, which is exactly why you get a master interview and you get some of the pickup stuff a little bit later. Sometimes you might find gold within these sort of retakes and sometimes you might find exactly what you wanted just at a different angle. If you have the time and you have the space, it's actually worth giving a shot. And the fact that you can only bring two lenses to get a pretty decent interview to look like it's a shot with multiple cameras, it actually works out pretty well. Now, angle number three is gonna be a little bit different, but also a little bit of the same. I pulled the camera back a bit so I get more compression because I'm using a 45 millimeter lens, but at the same time, I'm still going for that three quarter look. The camera's gonna be off onto the shadow side, or at least the same size as that bounce. And I'm gonna place myself between where my camera is and where my main light source is, which is gonna be the FC 300 and the window. Again, we're still gonna ask some of these questions, but what I do with camera angles two, three, and four is I get something really specific. I might ask maybe one or two questions out of the list I had, or a follow-up question based on one of the answers that we had previously in the master interview. This way it starts to vary up a little bit of the speech, and if you don't want your talent to feel bored of the conversation, which can happen when you ask them the same thing over and over again, if you have some follow-up questions that you leave for different camera angles, it might actually go a long way. Now for camera angle number four, and I think this actually is going to be my favorite shot, and mostly because you get a little bit of a catch light coming from that diffusion from the window coming right into the glasses. Now, still using that 45 millimeter lens, I wanted to get a close-up shot from the side. Still, everything's gonna be shot on the shadow side or the bounce side of my frame. That way, my orientation and my composition is still gonna look good because I'm in the same place. And at the same time, this is something that I could use again to have those follow-up questions and to add as another cutaway that I could use for my interview footage. All right, all right. Now, look, we're talking about solo filmmaking, and the Blackmagic 6K full frame does pretty decently. I mean, it's not a low light beast, it's not gonna be something you wanna go and shoot in darker situations, and the rolling shutter isn't perfect. However, knowing those two things, I just sort of made adjustments in terms of how I wanted to do B roll. Knowing that if I move the camera too much, I'm gonna get some artifacting, I mostly put my B roll on sticks and use some of those shots that I could put over top of the interview footage so when I'm cutting from one to the other, it feels like a seamless transition. Now, I did get a couple of handheld shots but it honestly wasn't that bad when I was using it. I think this is more than fine to get some small movements if you're doing a couple of little handheld movements back and forth, but in terms of the rolling shutter, it isn't the greatest. However, it's still usable for a lot of situations when you do need handheld B-roll. Now, if you're someone that's capturing things like sports, or maybe you're shooting out of the back of a car, or anything that's gonna be really high action and super fast, I still stand by the idea this might not be the best for you in terms of its rolling shutter. However, if you need to get a couple of pans on some B-roll while shooting an interview in a studio, I think this holds up more than fine. Okay, so we're gonna have a pretty basic timeline on DaVinci Resolve. And basically what I did was I used my video track number one in terms of our A-roll and our interview stuff. And also video track two is gonna be our B-roll with a little bit of effects up top. Now, what I wanted to talk about and someone asked about this was what you actually do to overlay your B-roll over top of your A-roll so the cuts don't look jarring between your fake cameras. And we're gonna go into that right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna turn off all the B-roll layers are gonna be up top here. And we're just gonna look at these couple seconds in terms of interview footage cutting from camera to camera. And that just also spoke to how I was living my everyday. Because Vancouver is such a film industry, you can see that. Now, honestly, that could kind of work. The angles are different enough that you kind of feel like you've just cut from one camera to something else completely different. And the way that I asked the questions kind of felt like it flowed a little bit in terms of what was being said before. But if you do want to add some B-roll over top of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these layers back on. Now, it doesn't take a lot to explain how to put B-roll over top of your A-roll. Basically, you just want to find the cut between your two clips 
and you can put whatever you want in between. Now, I'm gonna just shorten this because I've played it back a couple times and it is a little bit dragging. So I'm just gonna shorten this part a little bit. And we're gonna listen to that same dialogue again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from camera A, B roll is gonna go over top and I'm gonna go back to the angle too. Nuance of black culture was missing from what I was learning. And that just also spoke to how I was living my everyday. Because Vancouver is such a film industry, you can see that there is a lot of cleanliness. People value cleanliness. People value the way things will. And that's what it looks like when you put the B-roll over top of your A-roll. This is pretty simple editing kind of 101 stuff, but if you are doing this kind of fake multicam interview setup, this is something that you can use to your advantage. Now, you might have to get a little bit of B-roll after your studio shoot and after your interview, and that might just come at the cost of like paying for extra space or whatever have you, but you could actually make this work a super long way. And then all you need is a lo-fi hip hop track to go underneath, and then everything kind of looks good. Okay, so we're getting into the deep end here, but that's pretty much everything that I would do if I was solo filmmaking on the Blackmagic 6K. Now, again, jobs are gonna differ depending on what you're gonna be doing, but for this documentary, if I had to shoot everything solo without a crew, minimal fixtures, and relying on my locations, these are a lot of techniques that I would use. That being said, a special shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare, and also, if you guys do wanna check them out, it's in the description down below. But if you guys wanna know more about solo filmmaking or just how I would do it, you could leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make it into another video sometime. Time. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.